we see ourselves as people who have this absolute truth that we have to go you know we, we don't think about it in conquest anymore but we the history of Christianity is one of conquest and evangelization go to the ends of the earth and win them for Jesus and the military is in tow so we'll conquer them for Jesus too is that sort of conquest narrative is part of our baggage the idea of subjugating the earth is part of our baggage Western civilization brought the subjugation of the earth to a new art form um, this idea of like spiritual superiority, like a, a sort of Christian supremacy that's also tied to white supremacy has been part of our baggage. And the, the sad thing, if we, anybody who looks at the Gospels can see that Jesus wasn't about those things. Uh, we talk about Jesus being a king. We talk about Jesus um, and his kingdom of God. But really, if you look at how kings and authority work in the world, kind of a top-down pyramid hierarchy where you have peasants, merchants, uh, aristocracy, empire, emperor, and then you have like God on top. Jesus flips that. It isn't that Jesus trumps those other kinds of authority, it's that his authority is so qualitatively different that it's probably better to talk about it as an unkingdom. Because he subverts all that. He's the king who undoes kingship. And all of our Western structures of Western Christianity have lent towards this supremacy and conquest narrative. So much that it's even in our subtle DNA, like, even if I don't want to think of Christianity that way, it's still part of my theological baggage. And for me to claim this radical Jesus who subverts stuff without really naming all that baggage and repenting of it in a deep, not just kind of a words way, but a structural way about how I live my life, I'm just going to keep perpetuating some of that conquest, some of the baggage of empire, even as I'm proclaiming a nonviolent Jesus. And so to me, the book Unkingdom, uh, the, the book The Unkingdom of God, is about naming that radical way of Jesus and saying, look, in contrast, uh, we haven't really lived up to this, and we have a choice to make. We can act as though 2,000 years haven't, hi haven't happened and that we're not influenced to our spiritual core by this stuff, and then go about being radical Christians uh, who still do these same patriarchal, oppressive things unintentionally. Or we can stop and start naming and repenting of our stuff and then begin to, re, to relearn the gospel and live into it in radically new ways without um, being encumbered by some of this baggage that we've had with us for 2,000 years.